but at present her mother doesn't want her to be there in kolkata again she wants her back to bankura and she now wants her to take admission in ma in uh, bankura university so uh, this these trains are emerging that people are leaving the big urbanized centers and they are coming back to their hometown let us see what kind of dimension the new human civilization takes in near future uh, at the very beginning i would like to thank our first speaker professor nivedita mukherjee professor of sidhu kanu birsha university and her very long academic career her erudite in this field has made her quite famous among us she has uh written a few books published from very recognized well recognized and international publication houses i will mention a few such as gendering the narrative gender discourse on indian and indian english fiction it was published by new Cla new casual uk cambridge scholar publication the second one is dynamics of diasporic identity in commonwealth literature it was published by authors press the dark forces in shakespeare's plays published by adi publication the fictional world of amitav ghosh it was also published by authors press indian theater in english and literary feminism politics of gender and identity and authenticity published by authors press in 2012 she has received some significant honors and fellowships such as the us state fellowship award she is working with the teaching learning center iit kharagpur as a research collaborator and subject expert in the project titled graphic novel based on pedagogy for teaching grammar in schools she has been nominated uh, for Acad academician award by international association of social sciences in 2014 uh, she has already completed a minor project promoted by the ugc in 2009 and she she is presently working on an icssr funded project she has an international teaching experience in the seattle university in usa it was a tenure teaching for 45 days and she has editorial experience she has uh, edited the wesleyan journal of research the journal is published by bankura christian college as well as she has been the editor of appropriations the this journal is also published by uh, bankura christian college the department of english especially it's a departmental journal so at the very beginning i would like to request professor nivedita mukherjee to deliver a lecture so uh, nivedita ji please yes thank you shora welcome for uh, that long long introduction i don't think it was really that much was needed because most of you people know me i'm here almost at home with you people so now uh, before i start my presentation i would like to actually project upon the present situation and the things that we are being made to think about nature and that is very important now all right it is almost there was up to a phase we were thinking the man has came nature but nature has now raised its head and it is making us understand very well that actually we are guests all right and if nature chooses she can very well do without us there have been famous writers who have understood this importance of nature and today i speak of them mahashweta devi and as we all know she was actually mahashweta devi needs no introduction but the most important thing that strikes us when we speak about her is her empathy 
whatever she wrote and she wrote mostly for the downtrodden the neglected sector of society she went and lived with them she saw herself their living conditions and she raised questions so most of her writings are not really fiction in that sense we can rather call it naturalized fiction or historicized fiction and for this she got a number of awards shaito academy award ganpeet award R raman magasai sai award padma shri padma vibhushan but actually when we think of it she herself once said that it is not really the awards that are important to her she writes about real people and real issues and it doesn't cater she herself always actually emphasized upon this idea that she doesn't cater to a specific ideology we know she began by supporting the left because the left was originally working for the downtrodden section of society then she changed when she saw that a change was necessary for bengal she changed her point of view but one thing remained constant that is her battle for the mundas the lodhas the shabats actually now we have divided a region as we think of it we are really concerned about the portion of the forest land the jungle mahal that falls within the west bengal border but mahashweta devi she always said no borders cannot divide forest nor can humans be divided by borders she was always raising questions about the people who live in the chotanagpur region i'll be coming to that later on but her questions were related to the people who had made their the forest their home but slowly they were losing the forest of course i won't say that it happened in the 20th century or the 21st century it began much much earlier with the coming of the british imperialism this exploitation of the chotanagpur area had already began over here i would like to draw your attention to this statue because mahashweta devi has repeatedly referred to this statue in her talks in her interviews in her writings this is a statue of bisha munda which we find in rachi but there is something strange about the statue the statue is actually represented actually represents birsa munda in handcuffs and mahashweta devi again and again she, her first novel which actually i won't say the first novel that but the, her first famous novel which actually won her the shaito academy award was oronner odhikar where she spoke about these people especially about the battle of birsha munda and the question she raised again and again shadhin deshe keno ei hat kora thakbe and you know it is strange today is second june as i was going through my data and my notes what i found is that remember she wrote the book in 1977 long back and in 2016 second june the jharkhand government they decided to put up a new statue which does not have the handcuffs so we can understand the real purpose of her battle awards were not the purpose of her battle the purpose was to fight for the people who actually fought for their motherland over here again i would like to draw the attention of the listeners to 
the two to the difference between the tribal freedom fighters and the nationalist leaders or the freedom fighters the nationalist leaders in their concept there was a motherland whom they wanted to set free but mohashita devi writes that for these people the mundas the lodas the sabars actually their motherland was the forest land they even actually worshiped the forest she says over here this is very strange once a tribal girl asked her that when we go to school we read about mahatma gandhi did we have no heroes did we always suffer like this and that is when mahashweta devi says that she started thinking about the tribal heroes and what did she find of course there were number of leaders but as we know right up to a period the history initially it was white history which looked down upon the racial colonies next we may have had our own historians but again they did not give that much space to the, the underprivileged so as a result the underprivileged did not find a representation in history and when mahashweta devi thought of writing about this pe these people she was actually thinking about how to how to make the masses the masses aware of the battles which these people have fought again and again so she says remember the tribal areas of bengal are part of tribal areas in their vicinity even if they belong to other states they do not belong to this or that state they belong to each other the tribal world and the tribal way is complete in itself so she gives them a kind of space of their own the forest land it may be in west bengal it may be in jharkhand it may be in certain parts of orissa it is in totality one land and that is the tribal land in fact again in an interview with spivak you all know gayatri chakravarti spivak actually translated quite a number of stories written by mahashweta devi and she said india belongs to the tribals long before the incursion of the aryan speaking people the ramayana seems to contain evidence of how they were oppressed evicted from their homeland so actually if we take this bigger or rather broader vision what we find is that the original inhabitants of the land the land which we called aryavart to a certain period or bharat actually were pushed or relegated to the periphery of existence with the coming of the aryans so the subjugation or almost non human non human representation of the tribals began much much earlier than the british all right so she was thinking about these people and this is what made her write this very popular work oronade odhikar all right it is a historic fiction about birsa munda to the people of the jungle mahal area birsa munda needs no introduction because she was one he was one who fought for the people for his people over here again there is a differentiation obviously for this book as i told you all they, we received the shaitya academy award but it did not have much meaning
Now the problematic. I request those who are not speaking to kindly turn off your microphones, your audio, please. Okay, thank you. So, if we come to the problematics too of the research question, that is the arboreal politics. This concept was actually introduced in 1980 in a book, A Thousand Plateaus by the French philosopher Deleuze and the psychoanalyst Guattari. Okay, now they presented trees and forests in an entirely different perspective from that we are used to. They said, we are tired of trees, should stop believing in trees, roots and radicals, for they have made us suffer too much. All right. So they were actually speaking, they saw certain areas of connection between the colonial rulers, the imperial rulers, and the forest or the trees. If we think of the hierarchy, the rootedness, repetition, reaffirming the origin, and sameness at the expense of difference. All these things, the jungle actually has these things. The trees, if we think deeply, they do have this kind of an uh, kind of an attitude or presentation. And this made these two French men think of them as imperial rulers. But Mahashweta Devi, in her imaginary maps in the book, she herself actually questions this point of view. She, she speaks of a colonial motive in this identification of the natives with the wilderness. And thereby she exposes this agency of nationalist expulsion and marginalization of the indigenous population. So for her, the trees, the jungles, do not really speak of the arboreal politics of imperialism. Rather, it speaks of a politics of survival. Now, over here, we come into even deeper problematic zone. What is that problematic zone? Let us think most of Devi's works have been translated into English. Oronne Rodhikar was translated as Rights of the Forest. But those of us and most of us have done some study, we have some study of linguistics and that makes this title highly ambiguous. Oronne Rodhikar, Kar Rodhikar. All right, who has the right? Is it the forest people who have the right to the forest? Or is it the forest itself as an entity which has a right to exist? As I told you in this in this world of the coronavirus raging through us, this question about the right becomes very, very important. All right. So what we have found is that the Chotonagpur area, if we look at it, it was very famous, famous in the sense it was a rich store of famous, uh, you can say it was a rich store of iron ore, coal, steel, mica, copper. All right, minerals, rich minerals. So obviously the colonial rulers could not left, leave these storehouses unexplored. And what they did, they started cutting down trees, they started creating mines to bring out this rich material. And as a result, 
these forest people were kind of pushed to the periphery. All right. So in this text, actually, Mahashweta Devi, she talks about Vishamunda and in doing so, she makes use of oral narratives. All right. She makes use of colonial archives, the official documents and records which she could get her hand on to. And she speaks about Vishamunda and through him, the life of the Mundas. Now, as usually in an oral narrative, this novel also, Oronir Odhikar, has a number of narrators. The main one over there is Dhani Munda, who is a veteran, and he speaks about, he had actually taken part in this battle which Birsa Munda fought. All right. And as Birsa Munda, actually he says that Birsa Munda, the entire story is represented as Birsa Munda, who has already been captured and he's thinking back. All right. He's thinking about his life, about, and he says that for Mundas, rice is only a dream. We are all used to eating rice. Rice and wheat is the staple food of the Indians. But for the Mundas, this was a luxury. So what did they eat? Their food was gato, a gruel made of China grass. All right. So Birsa, his battle was for rice. The right to the forest, the right to cultivation, the right to production. He has asked for all these things. So as we go on, we will find that there is an intrinsic relation with between this Chotona, the forest in the Chotanagpur area and the Mundas. They were the original inhabitants. In fact, the name is taken from their forefathers, Chutiaharam and Nagu. Together it became Chotanagpur. All right. And they used to go to the forest for hunting. They made fields for farming. And their god was the forest god who was known as Singhonga. All right. So... Now, Mahashweta Devi, what she does is that she relates Birsa intrinsically to this forest to show how each belongs to the other. I have already spoken to y'all or introduced the question, Karodhikar, whose right? Is it the right of, of the forest to live well or is it the right of the forest people to be able to live or to follow their original way of sustenance in the forest? And we must know that the time has come that we learn about nature sustenance and personal sustenance from these indigenous people because they know how to use the forest and at the same time unuse the forest. Let the forest thrive. Now in this text there are repeated references to the forest, the jungle, this, uh, you know, this entire concept of each belonging to the other. So what does Birsa say? Birsa felt that the black virgin forest goddess was stretching her both arms and falling out. All this land is ours. This entire land belongs to us. We won't allow anyone. 
be it the dikus they call the money lenders and the merchants who came to these areas as representatives of the white colonizers the diku you know the story of bitsamunda i will ask those of you who haven't read oranerodhika to go back to it and we will find there is a strange you know a cohesive journey of bitsamunda from one to the other Birsa Munda, as the tribal children were in those days, he was sent to a British mission school. All right, so he first found how this English system of education actually de-tribalized the tribals or tried to do this. So he started protesting. He was sent out of the mission, and then. he goes back to the scriptures he again makes a travel or he travels to an ashram all right and over there also he finds that hinduism does not have any place for the tribals and then finally he revolts dhani says i told you most of the story is uh, as a narrative being reiterated by dhani munda and dhani munda says that when bitsa was kind of disheartened with this entire system the system which the upper class both the white people and the so called indians he was dissatisfied with all this and he used to roam the forest he found a connection of his soul with the forest and dhani could not understand what is happening this person who used to give speeches who used to protest why is he roaming in the forest and then one day bitsa got really annoyed and he said this is my forest and that according to mahashweta devi is the biggest statement which a tribal makes and we must honor that statement thank you so uh, thank you very much thank you very much uh, professor nivedita mukherji for delivering such a beautiful thought provoking lecture on the arboreal politics uh, the tribal studies and uh, the the uh, mahesh mahashwata devi's uh, decades long struggle for the rights of the tribal people uh, i was reminiscent of one uh, paper on king lear it was uh, an eco critical text and it 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 uh, poses a very significant question whom does a land belong to and especially in the trial scene when uh, lear is proudly dividing his periphery his kingdom and distributing it among his two daughters goneril and raken yes yeah. the question of course comes to our mind does the land belong to man or does a man belong to the land uh, that is the question and of course uh, guatari's rhizomatic politics replacing Uh, the arboreal politics is a very uh, innovative way of thinking about the politics of land from a new light so uh, uh, we shall open the floor for discussion after the uh, second speaker completes uh, his lecture and we shall go to the second phase of uh, our uh, web lecture today and the second speaker we have among us he is from yemen so i welcome akram mohammed ali al qazi from yemen and he is a lecturer and academic vice dean at the al kawat community college al mahawit yemen and the topic of his paper is uh, social media and its use in english language teaching so i would like to request Mr. Ali, to deliver his lecture, sir, please.
Yes. Uh, I think you are muted. Please unmute yourself first. Hello. Uh, yes, hello. Sir. Can you yes. hear me? Sir? Yes, now, now, now we can hear you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. okay, sir. First of all, I want to thank you all for inviting me to deliver this lecture. Actually, uh, my lecture was uh, like uh, a paper I have uh, made. It is a case study, actually, but I'll try here to just uh, go through the literature review and the results of. Uh, this is study I have made regarding actually it was regarding my country it is there was a case study of the university I am teaching and and the college I have been teaching there so uh, social media and uh, its uses nowadays it became a relevant study especially in the case of uh, this pandemic and uh, the situation the whole globe is suffering from by COVID-19 Social media offers uh, various platforms such as blogs and wikis and uh, many other applications like uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and many other applications for teachers to use in, in English teaching. Uh, and each platform provides many benefits in language education process. And uh, when the teacher decided to use social media in a class, they need to know which social media platform that can support and improve their students' outcomes and uh, which tool that they can use with the students to have them experience English language. Uh, this paper examines actually the social media applications that suits teaching English and explain how the English teachers can use them in the English field. The data of uh, the study I have made is based on uh, reviewing journals and books that are related to social media and some other applications, educational applications actually, which have appeared in the last decade, and uh, that they help English teachers to find out uh, what social media they can use for teaching English effectively. Uh, it's a reviewing ways of teaching and learning English as a foreign language, actually, because in our, in my country, and it, it's considered to be a foreign language, not a second language like many others, and like in Hindi. And uh, it helped the teachers to improve students' language skills through, through these uh, social media. Uh, it's an, an urgent need for providing teachers with the latest methods in, in English teaching. So here, uh, the technology changes the environment of our life and, uh, and improves the choices of a flexible feature. For instance, the internet supplies students, educators, administrators with many opportunities to do their social or their or professional duties when they need at any time or any place. The social media platforms have become common tools that use academic and that is used by academic institutions by everyone to share academic works, to share uh, research findings, works reviews, and communicate with their peers and teachers. Uh, Tom Scott and uh, Williams in, in his book, uh, Economics, in 2007, stated that uh, the new generation of learners are not content to be passive consumers, and increasingly their desire for choice, confidence, customization, and control by designing, producing, and distributing products themselves. Their members of the next generation use the web differently and they network differently, they learn differently, and they start in the university. Sorry. <laughs> because we are at home, huh? <laughs> okay. Okay, please. Yes. So as I, I mentioned that uh, members of the net generation use the net or the web differently and the network differently and they learn differently. And when they start at university, traditional values on how to develop knowledge collate with their values. Many of the teaching techniques 
uh, that have been worked for decades do not work anymore in, in our days now, especially in this situation uh, the world is going through. Many of the teaching techniques that have worked for decades do not work anymore because of new, stu new students learn differently too. The new generation is used to, uh, to network and its members work cooperatively. They execute several tasks at the same time and use the web to uh, acquire knowledge. The external web applications such as blogs and wikis also, they have been much used by uh, different countries, especially the developed countries like US and uh, Japan, like in India also it is used, but we find that very small number of some institutions are using it for their students to, com to create a communicative environment that engage them in conversations and motivate them to design their work and experiences. And uh, here they shared knowledge and with other people. Recent research, uh, researchers stated that there is a need to continue reflective on teaching with web-based applications. And we have several applications nowadays, uh, like uh, here we have the top uh, the top uh, educational stores uh, or applications like uh, uh, that can be used in uh, in schools and uh, colleges also like uh, Kahoot, like uh, Spillweather, like Google Classrooms, like Remind, like SeaWords, like uh, Edimodo and uh, Amination Kits and these are used in some schools and the universities and uh, what I want to mention here is that Wikipedia and blogs are much used in some educational institutions. And there are different kind of blogs here. We can mention some of, some of them. Uh, Blogger.com, one of these. Uh, Tumblr.com, WordPress.com, and uh, Kidblog. This also, we have a uh, Wikibox. Wikibox uh, is a written media project that aims uh, to creating a virtual place to collaborative writing. It is a, uh, an open content text box that everyone can use for practicing, editing, writing. Wikibooks are also text box which are written by using uh, wiki technology to develop and to uh, distribute text box that marks a fundamental shift in the concept of text box. Some many other institutions are still using it, but the percentage of these uh, uses are that much low. So we find that some institutions are still not aware of these kind of techniques and how the teacher should be, and how to uh, give this information to the teacher to be able to use such kind of media. We are all using these social medias in the personal level to develop them, to, develop, to come to the professional level of in, in teaching, language, in teaching, many other subjects. It's not only regarding English language or any other languages. We can use them in different ways. And uh, the wiki, wiki ideas for uh, teachers and students and also blogs can also create a kind of environment in which the all the learners or the teachers also can interact with the learners in, in a way that can give a kind of uh, effective results. Uh, here I have also mentioned in, in the paper that some social media applications grow fast as at all level of the world. Uh, the possible methods to transmit education and the planning teaching materials have increased. Social media platforms provide teachers and uh, students with the different advantages, such as improved inst in instructional materials and endless resources that involves the students with the, the various types of multimedia. It can also help teachers to engage with or uh, to engage students on classrooms activities that can be designed in the form of small groups and allow all the students to work together, integrate social media applications with teaching 
offers a variety of ways to teach curriculum and to provide students a healthy learning environment. Thus, students can learn effectively in their own space and time and with a, space, with a sense of control over the learning. In addition, teaching through technology provides many levels of instruction in one, in one room with a single teacher through YouTube videos, blogs, and wikis. Nowadays, students can have access to institutional materials at home, such as uh, available videos on the internet. And all the learning materials are stored and distributed electronically on it. Therefore, the web-based applications are considered as a friend environment for English as a, a foreign language students to search related issues for websites. And there are also, there are uh, the uh, management of issues associated. And if they miss the regular classes, they are able to go to the website and find also the instruction, instructional materials they missed during their absence. And this provide a kind of uh, fixed materials. They can go back to the, any of these websites and the, the search for the same lectures and listen to them again. And also they can have records if they got offline for some time. But in, in here, what we find is that the, the mm, traditional, the traditional mm, social media like we are using in the personal level, like uh, Facebook or Twitter, they are also found as uh, helpful in the sense that they can, we can make groups and we can provide lectures and on these kind of groups as private. So th there are advantages, and we are not coming here to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the social media. What we are concerned with is that we have to use these kind of social media in the ways we are. To, we have to change the traditional methods we are using, because nowadays in the present situation we are forced to to uh, to use these social media. Because there are no other choice. We are not allowed to lock down and we are not allowed to attend the classes. We are not going to have this, that space in which we will have face to face interaction with the students. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ali, uh, for presenting uh, in such a beautiful way. Because uh, you know that virtual reality is the reality today, and we are uh, to some extent compelled to access the social media platforms, the uh, video conferencing interfaces, to continue to pursue our uh, academic goals. Thank you very much for striking the keynote of this uh, web lecture series. Now the floor is open for discussion. I request the audience to ask questions if you have any, or uh, if you want to add something to the papers presented by our honorable invited speakers, the floor is open now. You can unmute yourself one by one, ask your question, give your suggestion, and then uh, mute yourself to avoid any kind of disturbance to others. So the audience. No questions. Uh, hello. Yes. Hello. Yes, we can listen to you. Uh, sir, I'm Dr. Shishpal from Palampur, Himachal Pradesh. Namaskar. I want to, Namaskar, sir. I want to ask that uh, how uh, these people are interacting with their students online and how the lectures are being given to them. Okay, so I think the question is to Mr. Akram Ali. Yeah. Sorry, so I Mr. Ali, uh, okay, can you, can you please repeat the question? 
how they are interacting with their students online and how the lectures are being delivered to them in such uh, a uh, pandemic situation so what we are doing now is a kind of uh, is an example of what uh, can be done Th this uh, kind of lectures also can be recorded and they can be posted in facebook or twitter or uh, any other platform like so uh, we are doing this we are having this lectures because of the pandemic because of the situation we cannot meet in one place and we have lecture so uh, this kind of applications like zoom which is called also one of the social uh, media you know uh, we have uh, google meet we have uh, so many other applications that can be used for uh, such kind of lectures it's not see it there is also kind of interaction this kind of interaction is also help the students to have uh, that space of uh, asking and uh, that space of interaction let's say in general okay there is, is a push there... yes okay. okay okay continue please hello continue uh, hello but is there yeah, any uh, but is there any sort of problem uh, related with the uh, net problem or any other thing such communication see, 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 it happens. See, it happens because see, there are so many problems that is facing such conferences. I was afraid actually yesterday that I will not be able to attend today because to yesterday at that at this time there was no power. There was a power cut, <laughs> so I did not attend the yesterday's lectures. So the, the what I want, uh, what I preferred is that if these lectures are uh, recorded and posted and uh, the students can see it at any other time, this is no problem. But okay, uh, so what we see in Himachal, I am okay. Okay, thank you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, do you have another question, sir? Hello. Hello. Do you have any any other question? Yeah, uh, as I am teaching in a college over here in government college, mm -hmm. uh, so we, uh, in Himachal Pradesh we are facing such problem of communication and uh, net problem also. So we, we, we are posting uh, lectures uh, uh, on WhatsApp group only. We are unable to do online classes uh, face to face, uh, like um, on online classes are not there, but we are only posting such things on WhatsApp groups. Uh, right, right, and uh, and here is another question actually by simply simply literary. She asks question in these changing times of online instructional engagement, even before COVID nineteen pandemic. Sir, how do we answer the rising challenge of a uh, diminishing psychomotor and effective skills of students? Jasmine from Osminga. Okay. Let me tell you that he he and before this pandemic, yes, also there was it. It should be like an institutional kind of work. These these the use of these social media or the web-based uh, lectures or uh, uh, let's say conferences or whatever it is or lectures in general. So this should be uh, institutional. Uh, based means that in the university or the college you are in have the, the, the that management to to create such platforms to create such groups of uh, uh, social in social media to and to give the students their own passwords their own emails to to access these platforms and to attend these uh, kind of activities in, in, in the institution. OK, there is another question uh, posted in the chat box for Mr. Ali. Uh, it is uh, someone from Simply Library Literary. The question is the Yes, yes. That is, that is the in this question I have replied to now. That is the question oh, that okay. I have replied to okay, now. Okay. So I think uh, there is uh, no. No more questions. There is in a the question chat for me, I think. Yes. Hello. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Is this Hello? for Monica? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. So this is Abhavya Rattan from Nalanda. And my question is for Nivedita, ma'am. 
नमस्कार सर मैम आई हैव गॉन थ्रू अ शॉर्ट स्टोरी बाय महाश्वेता देवी इट वाज एन टाइटल्ड नून इन हिंदी और बांग्ला वॉट एवर वी से एंड इट्स लिटरल ट्रांसलेशन वॉज सॉल्व इन इंग्लिश so i was basically asking you if there are some imperialistic elements in that short story or how is that imperialistic elements that uh, you were just talking about uh, are they even today present in the mindset of those tribals which we are talking here in the issue so yes i would like course. to share you know yeah. uh, uh, like uh, as i was going through the different uh, interviews of mahashweta devi and all these things she yes, says yes. that there is language itself we all know language okay. is a means it's a vehicle of politics all right yeah. it is the superiors yeah. the very concept that they tried to introduce english in india as i told you okay. that bitsha was taken to a mission school they were being yeah. educated and there was a father actually it was not mm. just language mm. and they were also trying to convert these people into their own religion that is mm. nothing bad in conversion but what i mean mm. is that it should be willing all right so this yeah. politics was always there this imperialist politics and as mm -hmm. you know you were talking about salt salt yeah. has been a means of very big politics yeah. uh, you know in fact uh, i think more than mahashweta devi the salt politics was highlighted by gandhi mahatma mm -hmm. gandhi in the salt march actually they yeah. wanted to Uh, produce their own salt it was a way of you know protesting against the british yes. rule because the salt is made from the sea water the mm -hmm. and it is again an element of nature it nature, nature is giving us in bounty and some mm -hmm. outsider the imperial mm -hmm. lord in this case is mm -hmm. using that very gift of nature natural Yeah. to kind of you know to as a means of dominance so it, this was protested and mahashweta devi also highlights the same politics over here okay i hope thank you uh, i have been able to clarify that. yes yes ma'am thank you so much thank you thank you uh, is there any other question from the audience hello sir Uh, so my yes, question yes, is to dear sir uh, mr ali uh, how are we going to tackle the adversities that we face uh, while taking or giving online class i mean uh, how are you going to remove the slight barrier that lie between the teacher and the student in online class and there's a, there's a communication gap there we might face a communication gap while giving or taking online class Hello, sir. So could you hear me? Yes. Now you may ask your question, please. Okay. Uh, so my question is to dear sir, Mr. Ali. Mm. and uh, how are you going to tackle the adversities that we face while taking or giving online class uh, i mean how are you going to remove the barrier or the communication gap that lie between the teacher and the student i mean we might face a communication gap a little distraction some kind of things okay uh, in, in, in social media in social media or even okay. that is social gap how how i can like explain it to you here, here in, in such uh, in such yeah. in common say there is nothing to mention about this so the gap between students and teacher it's so we I are all, we are all we are all in the same boat we are in the same shape of uh, teaching and uh, the process of education so talking about social gaps in the process of teaching or in process of learning yeah, yeah. can you hear me yes sir yes i can hear you uh, so when uh, mm. actually uh, in offline class we are totally engaged but in online class sometimes we find that we are not totally engaged we sometimes maybe distracted 
Okay, or you mean you mean, uh, you mean on online? We are we are okay. We are connected, and but on offline there is a gap. See, uh, what we are talking about here is that we should use the social media in the effective way in which we are able to get the effective results. So the talk the, in these gaps we are not available in such kind of a process in especially in the in i mean in the digital learning let's say okay sir. Mm. okay sir, thank you can i add something to this yes yes ma'am actually what i felt is that your lecture was extremely illuminating thank you for that what i was feeling is that you know learning especially in india has been an imposition like right from the small age parents tell the children learn you have to learn again in school in college in university in the offline method it is kind of an imposition but when we are teaching online the learner has the freedom to either choose to learn or choose not, not to learn okay True. so over here there is a direct agency so learning here becomes a personal a material of your personal interest so that way it actually allows you to choose whether you wish to learn or you don't wish to learn all right so we are somehow how getting shifted from that imposition or you can say thank you i think there is some uh, network glitches yeah i think there is uh, she added a very important point that here in online also it can be controlled it can be impositioned on so by the institutions i mean here that the institutions can control this online learning means the presence of an even uh, even the presence of each learner can be registered can be you know can be, can be observed by the institution itself, by the teacher, by the group administrator. I think Mam is coming back. So, can I add on? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, what I was trying to tell is that uh, 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 taking cue from uh, what Nivedi. <laughs> yes, I want to add something. As a teacher, uh, one important. Uh, I always. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Uh, yes. Uh, uh, actually, I was I was wanting to uh, add something. As a teacher, the imposition I always apply on students, they may dislike it. Is 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 that they have to turn their cameras on all the time. Mm -hmm. I always compel them to keep their cameras on only for that reason, so that they may not be distracted and so that I may have a proper surveillance of what they are doing. Ah, because maybe, uh, maybe they, were, they are attending, but uh, only uh, the voice and they are, they are doing something else. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. They may be sleeping also, putting their cameras off. Okay, so uh, uh, I have a question, ma'am. I have a question, Nivedadi. Hello. Uh, Nivedadi, yes. can you hear me? Yeah, okay. yeah, I can hear you. Yes, uh, my question is, how, how, how should we apply the rhizomatic theory of Guattari and Deluge to the reading of uh, this Oronne Rodhikar, meaning uh, as much as I have understood is that uh, we should use nature in, this, in that way so that uh, nature may not be damaged or harmed, meaning we should uh, go back to the traditional way of living. Yeah. My, yeah, my yeah. question is, is this, uh, is this perspective of mine correct or uh, do you want to add something else to it? No, no. Actually, you know, uh, thank you. I actually support what you have been saying, but uh, I won't really say the rhizomatic theory of Guettari and uh, Deleuze. Uh, rather, I would be referring to the theory they used in their ecosophy, uh, ecosophy writings. All right. Over there, they have accepted that environment has a positive agency and environment requires to be nurtured to be 
cared for. I was actually trying to bring in Mahasheta Devi from that point of view. All right, I don't really support their point of view where they look upon trees as a symbol of imperialist invasion and all these things. I'm not in support of that. I am in support of their concept, which they have actually put forward in the ecosophical writings. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, I have a question for you. Yes. I'm Tapun Mahato from Raman Government College. I'm asking you that uh, in Devi's very books, we have saw that we've seen, uh, she is talking about the problems of tribal people. Is there any which, solution which book? In, in our book? Which book, uh, uh, just like Oroner Odhikar, we saw that the forests are being cutted and the tribal peoples are facing trouble for their residential and other things. Is there any solution in her writings? Actually, you know, solution is personal awareness. All right. We all know that in our all colleges, different colleges, to speak of a truth, I think the college teachers over here, Jaya, Shaurav, all of them, Shamashri, all of them will agree with me that usually what happens, we in our NSS units, they plant huge number of trees, but how much care do we really take to see if, if those trees or saplings are actually growing up to be huge trees? All right. Usually most of them are eaten by cows or goats. And this is the whole venture is point. So what we are doing, actually, we are doing usually for the IQAC calendar or for something else. Mostly we are doing it with a different purpose. When we think, and I feel this COVID-19 has seriously made us think that we need to not just plant trees, but we need to, that tree should be our life. We need to protect it just as we protect our children. Then only the purpose will be served. So the solution is totally a personal solution. And I can tell you, now nature is showing us that if we don't go for that solution, nature will obliterate humanity. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Madam, I have a question. Yes. Uh, hello. Oh, Maya. Are you? Hello. Ma'am, I have a question. It was uh, nice listening to you after a long time. Uh, my question is not directly related to Mahasheta Devi. It's a general question. Uh, Ma'am, do you think that uh, the nature, or rather, don't you think that nature culture binary, uh, this binary automatically dissolves when we talk about the tribals living in close vicinity with nature? In fact, they live more in harmony with nature than uh, the so-called civilized lot. In fact, ma'am, there are a number of eco poems as well, uh, which talk less about nature and more about the actual lives led by the tribal people in close vicinity with nature. In fact, Shodabda mentioned about Lear in The Tempest also. I agree to that. Ma'am, yes. uh, just, just a minute. Yes, in yes, The Tempest sure, also, sure. ma'am, uh, when Caliban uh, puts his claim to Prospero, this island is uh, mined by Sycorax. He takes care to mention uh, that it is he who did acquaint Prospero with uh, every nook and corner of the island, every natural attribute of the island, uh, the berries, the fountains, the springs. Don't you think that, in fact, uh, uh, there are Calibans who live more in harmony with nature than the Prosperous? Uh, that was my question. Yeah, yeah, sure. Obviously, I think uh, more than a question, this is actually a point of view, okay, an orientation, because uh, obviously there are more Calibans and we need more Calibans in today's world, all right. We don't really need Prosperos anymore, those scientific magics which are helping us to control nature is no longer needed as such. And as I was telling you, Oromne Rodhikar is actually, if these 
people have right to the forest they will kind of they will of course they will be hunting they will think things but they are have their own way of doing things you know in canada presently a project is going in where the majority the white majority they are being made to go to the reserves where the original inhabitants live and they over there they are being taught how they can actually live in harmony with nature all right sustenance is possible in harmony with nature that is what mahashweta devi has been saying again and again so i agree with you calibers are more necessary and i think there are more calibers but again thank we you have so much same trees remember our trees almost died out thank you so much ma'am thank you and and here i would uh, i would like to add one point and uh, there is a book called beyond romantic eco criticism by asto nichols and in the book nichols coined a term called urban natural by urban natural he is suggesting that urbanity is not different or separate from the natural we have to uh, coalesce the two things in such a way so we can have that uh, natural eco critical environment in a in a completely urbanized a dimension meaning in a way he is trying to uh, challenge the binaries between nature and culture and uh, he used the term arba natural in the text okay i i think uh, joyadi is trying to say something please joyadi joyadi is with us dr joya ghosh hello i was trying to add on actually yeah hello hello yes 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 hello I was yeah, uh, can you hear me yes yes yes, yes. Uh, i was just uh, trying to add on to what uh, tonmoy was trying to say that uh, and uh, what uh, uh, your uh, uh, sir was trying to say with uh, regard to social media and uh, uh, language teaching that uh, see earlier in the classroom uh, if the student was not attentive you could punish them yes. right many a times it so happened uh, but now as nibirita was trying to say that uh, like uh, we we can't do it it's our, the students choice because it is becoming more learner centered but yeah. uh, you see uh, it's also covid 19 say perhaps if you take covid 19 instance then it is time for us to look into ourselves and uh, like uh, coming to communion with our own inner self if we if we could think of things in that way that we could we have an outer self and we have a inner self that, that way then it's it's a kind of a time to get in communion with our inner self and think of what we are doing and in that perspective a student also uh, in this new normal has to think of things uh, in their own way they have to adjust themselves in this kind of a platform uh, yes it's difficult but then they have to like all of us have to adjust ourselves so that we can move on uh, otherwise you know life will come to a full stop academia would not be able to move forward <clears throat> uh, that was what i was trying to say actually like it's time to be true to ourselves also suppose now uh, i keep myself locked on and i uh, start reading a book and you'll see that i am uh, uh, there but i am actually not there now you won't be able to understand so in a similar way if a student is on uh, locked on you think that the student is there now shoro you were saying that you ask your students to put their cam keep their cameras on like uh, my students are living in very interior positions of the village where the internet is very slow right i can't ask them to keep their cameras on because they will be saying that well if with the with the video on uh, the consumption is high right so they'll have they'll be putting off their uh, video you know Come now on. to keep good faith na that uh, well my student is there so it's all about keeping faith in ourselves on faith in each other right that's what i was trying to say i hope okay I thank you very much is there, uh, yes is there any other question Hello, from sir. the audience. Hello. 
Yes, from Coke. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, okay. everyone. Good afternoon, professors. Uh, my name is Shankar Subba Chaudhary. I'm from Ondathana Mahavidyalaya, sixth semester. Um, my question is: Is not the use of social media on education affects or makes any conflict against the nature? Um, isn't this puts us in a position of compromisation? Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, which one is beneficial this physical education that to we uh, uh, have received before this pandemic phase or this virtual education we are now receiving uh, during this time isn't this uh, isn't this compromise on our communicating skills or um, on our physical um, on our personalities or uh, or on our, us or um, Okay, I I got it, I got it, I got it. See, yeah, the challenges are there. Okay, so what we have before COVID nineteen situation and the lockdown and what we are having now of online classes and lectures and conferences. See, it depends on you. It depends on you and what you want to learn and what you want to have. So, uh, we or institutions can make these kind of virtual lectures or uh, online lectures available and it depends on the students now here or to to be engaged in such activities or to let himself be you know but still if you are here it means you have that you know motive to learn you are having these kind of lectures to help you to make a progress in what you are doing in your education so this uh, regarding I, when you talk about physical education, I talk, I, you mean face to face, you mean classroom, traditional classrooms. Yeah, there are advantages of these kind of classrooms and there are disadvantages of online classrooms also. But still, we, we are, uh, they are trying to give you space to learn in such kind of uh, disasters, in such kind of lockdown or wars. Or, and see, in the future, I want to also to comment in the previous uh, doctor who was talking about uh, the situation and uh, that his students are from so far the villages and all. See, nowadays, uh, technology is also is always in progress. So now, maybe after one year, less than one year, the 5G means fifth generation of internet maybe will be available for everywhere in every village and it, it will be used see today we are starting like this lectures but in the future they maybe it will be like the normal thing that we will have lectures in this way only we cannot predict anything technology is growing so fast and mm, there will be no space for the traditional classes we can expect that some people are talking about 10 years of this kind of situation with uh, COVID-19 and we hope not, it will not continue to be like this. No, everybody is depressed in this lockdown and in this situation. Nobody is happy with what is going on, but we are forced to utilize the time. And through these lectures and through these conferences, we are do, trying to do something. We are trying to do something to help us to go forward. I hope I have agreed to answer the question. Okay, is there any other question? Hello? Ma'am. Thank you. Sir. I'm here. I'm Koshi Bhatji. Ma'am? Yes. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, ma'am, ma'am. I have a question regarding yes. your topic. Um, ma'am? Means they they have means that tribal people don't have any gender barrier, or they strongly it is important at least in this time that they have a great immunity system and even immunity power at least immunity power they have means in this coronavirus pandemic we at least we should follow them so is there any organization or any other institute means they are means they have a propaganda to spread their means these um, facilities they have or their characteristic features even they are indigenous people even the uh, before the arrival of aryan means we are means we are the and uh, we are the follower of that so can you 
tell about this means what is your take on it means how can uh, this uh, this is spreaded this can be spreaded means they have these no, immunity as i was telling you about the canadian scenario the canadian scenario and uh, even in us the reserves where actually you know this is again a politics that special politics i'll refer to it as because usually what happens the people who are the original inhabitants they are forced back all right they are made to live in certain ghettos they are not really allowed total freedom as other people are and in this process they have lived but they have lived in correlation with nature so now the that the majority has realized that this they need to learn this mantra from the indigenous people they are seriously working in traveling to those ghettos and living with them and learning their way of life so this is sustenance in keeping with nature and in india actually you know this uh, ganesh devi he has a grew he has actually he was a, an avid supporter of mahashweta devi and he has actually started a program for the decriminalized tribes of india as you know the lodas are also decriminalized tribes of india all right so he did it for the charas but i don't really know if the, there are groups over here who are uh, who are making an endeavor to learn from these tribes their way of existence but that is very much needed in today's world yes yes ma'am even in subodh circles uh, uh, sa chaturtho panipat er juddho the horror is the reflection of that birsha munda so he yeah. is living in the school so i think it means uh, is it not possible to include any such takes or any that endeavor made by such persons to uh, means in our syllabus as if they get the at least uh, they get the ideology to at least decolonize ourselves because they are the indigenous people means uh, before the arrival of us so it, no, it, it, it these it, texts are being used for instance uh, i know in bakura university also dropdi is being taught right in purulia yes. university dropdi is being taught but that again is a gender binary all right o over there the tribal perspective over there also and actually how these people are being made the vehicles it was we must remember wasn the leader of that movement nor was her husband there were some and there were some men from the town the urbanized groups who were actually using them the battle was fair those are other things but the fact is they were being used as vehicles battle it is only towards the end where she asserts her right the very you can see the female body which was used as a site for assertion by the senanai kandits people she uses that very female body as a kind of prop for protest that is where it is coming in but not really in the sense poshik is referring to the tribals as living in close relation to nature for that we need text mahashweta devi has written other text for this for example uh, we have uh, salgira dake all right in the call of a birthday that again has been uh, translated into hindi also it has been translated into english also that again deals with the tribal movement before birsa munda a movement earlier to birsa munda and again we have choti munda and zaro all right so all these tales he is actually over here speaking about the problem of the tribal people irrespective of gender but dropdi is more of a gender study 
And yes, I agree, we need more of these texts to be included in our syllabus. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, is there any other question? Hello? Hello? Hello, sir. Yes? So my question is to Nivedita, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, okay. are you uh, hearing me? Yes, but very faintly. I can't get your voice clearly. Oh. Now, ma'am, are you getting me clearly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, I don't know whether uh, my question is uh, relevant or not, but uh, please help me. Uh, are not we, we are going against what Maheshwata Devi attempts to say or her motive while educating ourselves on her? Like uh, uh, she uh, attempts to... Uh, um, say about nature or um, to protect the nature and the tribals and we are using this uh, social uh, networking or uh, excessive using of the social networking we are deteriorating the nature we are compromising the tribals um, so uh, aren't we going against uh, her while you know, educating ourselves on, on I have side? understood your question and that is again another problematic zone actually but we need uh, technology. All right. We can't say that from today we are going to stop all technology. We need technology. But there should be a balanced use of it. Because, you know, when uh, these 4G towers, I don't know how many of you are aware of the fact that when the 4G towers were placed in different areas, we stopped seeing some particular birds. All right, yes, earlier we yes, used to see lots of crows and other birds, but we stopped sparrows, seeing those but, birds. They were being yes. killed. All right, but this is a problem. But at the same time, when we are thinking of distant learning, now this COVID-19 situation has made it uh, an emergency that we teach our students, but we teach them maintaining the social distance they can learn from the safety of their homes we need this all right we cannot ignore that but yes within limitations too much of use will lead action that is definite thank you thank you ma'am okay is there any other question Hello, am I audible, ma'am? Yes, yes, you're audible. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Yes, ma'am. My question is on behalf of Komalika Basu. Uh, she's unable to connect to the uh, speaker. Uh, she wants to uh, ask you, she's asking you to explain the arboreal politics for her. Okay, this see, arboreal politics, as I was telling you all, it is actually by and large a concept that we get from these French psychoanalysts and French social thinkers. They were geopolitical thinkers and they related trees to imperialism and trees were looked upon as a kind of political exertion, all right, of the imperialist rule. But over here, Mahashweta Devi herself, though, of course, I must accept the fact that Deleuze and Guettari, they also, though they spoke from this angle, again in their later works on ecosophy, they uh, went against their own sake. All right. And they also felt that trees, there are other ways in which trees cannot really be looked upon as means of colonial exertion. All right, they thought of that too. And Mohashita Devi uses this very nature. It is, you know, a way of the colonial, the colony writing back. All right, it is kind of Mahashita Devi was writing back. She was using this concept of nature or trees in multiple of her works. And she has referred to uh, she has referred to this in her discussions with Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak. And according to her, trees or nature 
of the home of the forest people so nature becomes a part of indigeneity so in this way she was studying this politics as a politics of survival survival both for the forest people and for the forest got it yes thank you ma'am thank you okay uh, a very long interactive session uh, is there anyone who wants to ask any other question okay so i think all the questions have been answered uh, thank you the audience because uh, Okay, uh, Tapan Mahato has a question. Is online learning going to be the future? Yes, it has been. It has all uh, already been answered by Mr. It Ali. has become the future. Yes, it will become the future, of uh, course. Uh, so we are at the very end of uh, today's uh, web lecture, and uh, I was uh, telling something about the audience. I find the audience really very attentive and well informed. They asked uh, many intelligent questions. And I thank you, all the invited guests, for giving uh, us time to give lectures on, on the two important topics and very unique topics, of course. Uh, I hope the audience uh, is very happy. Uh, and tomorrow, we are going to have our third session. And the guests for tomorrow are Dr. Uh, Gulam, uh, sorry, Hemant Gulapali. He is from the University of Vidyashagar, Vidyashagar University, and uh, he will be talking on heterogeneity. And we have Dr. Arnav Kumar Sinha from the University of Badwan. And Dr. Sinha will uh, talk, uh, talk on uh, cultural liminality. And today, uh, tomorrow, we, we shall also have a very uh, good uh, topic that is uh, that is dr arnob sina's topic he will be talking on uh, mamangdai's poetry and mamangdai is prescribed for the sixth sem bakura university colleges so i hope that the students will be uh, benefited immensely so for today give us leave to call it a day it was a wonderful session thank you audience everyone thank you and Yes. yes, thank you, audience, and thank you, thank thank you. you to Shoda for thank having you. us. Welcome, uh, yes, thank you. for giving us this platform for speaking. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye. Thank you, sir.